Hey family, I wanted to talk to you today about the Bible and about how we were taught about the Bible, okay? And I want to do this in a way that helps to expand your knowledge. Because it, for me, it's not about trying to like destroy people's beliefs. What I really want to do is to expand you. And so today I want to talk about uh, some books that you might not have heard of or ever been aware of because we were never allowed to really study stuff as Christians or study stuff outside the Bible. We were told not to look at uh, things outside the Bible. And there was a reason for doing that. So I'm going to uh, get into talking to you today about one particular book and uh, that might be very interesting for you but it's to show you and expand you in the idea of or, or is to show you and expand you on how these ideas were taught outside of how we were taught uh as christians okay so we'll uh, so we'll get into that all right so moving forward all right so as Christians, we were taught the Bible is a new revelation from God that is perfect and without error. But that's really not true, okay? There were many writings of that same style and content of the biblical gospels and New Testament from the first through the fourth century CE written by the Gnostics. These books were categorized as apocrypha by the church because they were not accepted as canon or as the books that we now know as the Bible. They were said to be heretical from the Catholic Church perspective because so much of the teachings in them didn't fit the narrative of the church and a historical Jesus. Many of these books were said to be written by the disciples of Jesus or Jesus himself. Books with the names like the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Apocryphon of John, the Gospel of Judas. And these books would track right along with the New Testament Gospels that we were taught about or know of in the Bible, and hundreds more. Many scholars tell you that the sources of the Bible books cannot be found or pinpointed, but again, that's just not true. They can be traced back to the ancient secret Egyptian teachings, much of which was passed down orally. Bible scholar Alvin Boyd Kuhn said, the allegations that the publication of the Gospels could not be explained or accounted for unless a great teacher had lived whose life inspired their writings must give way before the understanding that their appearance was due to the breakdown of esotericism. In other words, the knowledge was not supposed to be written down because it was not meant to be read and memorized. This knowledge was meant to be experienced. But just like the Bible, these books had esoteric or hidden meaning to obscure the true nature of the writings so that they would not fall into the wrong hands. These books and scrolls had particular narratives. As a matter of fact, there are books like the Gospel of Thomas that are probably older than the canonical Gospels with a lot of the same scriptures found in these New Testament Gospels. Scholars noted this book in particular was not copied because it was originally written in Coptic which is a form of the ancient Pharaonic language of Egypt and not written in Greek. Although you'll find later versions translated into Greek. What became the contents of the Gospel of Thomas are dated around the first century CE. Scholars believe that the Gospel of John was written to refute the teachings of the Gospel of Thomas. There are many scholars that believe the Gospel of Thomas is more authentic to what the teachings of Jesus should have been. Why was this book and many others not allowed into the Catholic version of the Bible? Partly because an early Christian bishop named Clement of Alexandria said there could only be four gospels because four pillars hold up the earth, but also because many of the books would not support the narrative of the historical flesh and blood Jesus. The teachings from the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas would fit closer to the original secret teachings of the ancient Egyptians. Early Christians came out of Gnosticism, but with the formation of the Catholic Church and the need to have a savior to legitimize the organizational power of the Catholic Church, Gnosticism became a threat to the church. But why? One was a general Gnostic belief was that we humans are all gods with heaven contained within us. Number two, for Gnostics, Jesus was conceptually the revealer of wisdom that which enlightened. 
not a special person above all others. In the book, The Gnostic Bible, the role of the Gnostic savior or revealer is to awaken people who are under the spell of the demiurge, not as in the case of the Christ of the emerging Orthodox Church, to die for the salvation of people, to be a sacrifice for sins, or to raise from the dead on Easter. The Gnostic revealer discloses knowledge that frees and awakens people and that helps them recall who they are. This concept of the Christ being the revealer was about our own personal journey of becoming a Christ. Becoming enlightened in a natural state that we all go through at different stages in our lives. The Egyptian Yeusa as light was where the Greek concept originated. Yeusa was the S-O-N of God or the S-U-N of the Egyptian netter Atum that was both masculine and feminine. Atum is often represented as male, but in comedic science Atum is both or a twin. The ancient meaning for Thomas means twin, which connects back to the ancient Egyptian Atum and sayings of the Lord. In his book, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, author Gerald Massey connects the dots from ancient Egypt to the Gospels. He says enough has been cited to show that the revelation ascribed to Jesus, the Christ of the canonical Gospels, had been previously published in the ritual of the resurrection and uttered by Yehu the Sioux of Atum Ra. Yehusa equals Jesus and Tum equals Thomas who was and is and ever will be the Egyptian Jesus independently of any personal historical character. As stated earlier, the Gospel of Thomas in books or scroll form is most likely older than the canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It would have been circulated around the same time as all the canonical Gospels. As what is called an apocryphal book today, it was said at the time that these books contain secret teachings only for the ears of those that could hear it. This book and others were built on a foundation of going beyond belief to knowing an interpersonal revelation. This flew in the face of the Catholic Church orthodoxy, which taught that only through the clergy could we connect to God. They urged the flock to denounce these teachings of light within us all. In a book Beyond Belief, Elaine Pagel states, Irenaeus, the Christian Bishop of Lyons, circa 180 CE, warns the flock to despise heretics who speak like this and who call humankind Anthropos, the God of all things, also calling him light and blessed and eternal. If you could understand the esoteric foundation or secret knowledge of these books, they would free you from the grips of mind control that Christianity gave the world through the Bible. Many have translated these apocryphal books, but still do so through a Christian view of Jesus as a historical person. They do speak of the mystical nature of these writings, but don't really know the metaphysical components to connect the dots and open up the wisdom of these writings for you. So these are some sayings of the Gospels of Thomas that were considered heresy by the church. In the Gospel of Thomas, it was taught that the light of Jesus is in everyone. In her book, Beyond Beliefs, Elaine Pagel states, when certain disciples plead with Jesus to show us the place where you are, since it is necessary for us to seek it, he does not bother to answer so misguided a question and redirects the disciples away from themselves toward the light hidden within each person. This, of course, would not make Jesus something special or different from any human. In saying 113 in the Gospel of Thomas, we're being told that heaven is not a place, and this is what it says. His disciples said to him, when will the kingdom come? Jesus said, it will come not by expectation or because you watch and wait for it. They will not say, look here or look there. But the kingdom of the Father is spread upon the earth, and people do not realize it. This is very similar to the saying found in Luke 17, verse 20. But it's not something that we are ever taught in church or were ever taught in church. 
Here's another way that this idea of heaven was taught in the Gospel of Thomas. This is saying number three. And in this, he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is inside you. Jesus said, if those who lead you say to you, look, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky would enter before you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish of the sea would enter ahead of you. But the kingdom of God exists within you and it exists outside of you. Those who come to know or recognize themselves will find it. And when you come to know yourselves, you will become known and you will realize that you are the children of the living Father. Yet if you do not come to know yourselves, then you will dwell in poverty and it will be you who are that poverty. These sayings will fly in the face of the early Catholic Church and most Protestant churches and teachings even to this day. They wanted us to believe that heaven was a place of a reward for just blindly believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Many of these books have teachings that go further into the mysticism. Stuff that the church would teach you to stay away from and say that it was heresy or satanic. Now the Gnostics did butcher some of these ancient teachings themselves. They have the shell and a French aspect of these teachings, but it's important that you get back to the original teachings of ancient Kemet to really grasp the depth of these teachings. As I said before, you can still go off track with these ancient writings if you read them through the Christian eyes. They will be just as confusing and contradictory as the Bible. As Christians, we were taught to idolize the Bible and worship it, as if to look at it critically was criticizing God. The truth is that the books of the Bible were not a revelation and unique as we were taught. They were a few of many Gnostic texts circulating between the first and fourth century CE. We were given the books that would keep us in spiritual elementary school. There are a lot more levels. I hope this has been helpful to at least open your eyes to the idea that the Bible is not as the church has taught us. If you're interested in learning how to read these texts from a deeper esoteric perspective, I've created a course that will teach you how to do so. Go to the esotericchrist.com and sign up for it there. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for new updates, like and share with anyone that will be consciously expanded and vibrationally uplifted by this content.